Hello, everybody. Um, this is going to be um, a long awaited for, long waited for uh, presentation on the um, six inch plasma ball. I am so excited the way this turned out. Uh, it really, it really is looking good. And it will be available for purchase uh, in the very near future. And it looks like my target price is going to be $75. Uh, this is a lot more than what the um, three inch uh, discontinued plasma ball project was about. Um, and I'm just going to start right in. So you, as you can see, I have three um, of the same six inch plasma balls. One is turned off uh, in front of us. And the first thing I wanted to show you is that it's been modified inside the circuit board. Um, pretty easy modification, uh, but I'm going to give you a little closer look up at the business end of this by bringing it closer to the camera. And it shows you clearly that I have two RCA phonos and two switches. There you go, two switches. These are um, switches that allow you to uh, put this in function generator mode, or we'll call it spooky, two mode of control. You can um, do various combinations, part spooky and part um, self-driven. And that is only the start. So let's first take you through the switch control and the connections. Um, as the unit is right now, standalone, nothing connected to it, you can turn it on and you'll notice that immediately it starts working. This is the base frequency of anywhere between 25 and 30 kilohertz that these plasma balls run at and it does make a difference um, if they're running slightly uh, higher or lower in that range. Uh, they look more full-bodied or not in their presentation the way the uh, Berkeley currents in the plasma streams uh, look. This is, <laughs> this is running extraordinarily well. Um, so if I put the switches in the middle position, it turns off the internal um, generator. And if I put it into the very up position, enables external control and in this case we'll be controlling it with a spooky and I'll go over that very shortly in uh, a second video. This here is equivalent to the gating that's the second input or channel 2 on a spooky. Really doesn't matter you can use channel 1 or channel 2 in either position. It doesn't matter how you set it up. Same thing middle position on the toggle switch is off all the way up. It's hard to see that I'm turning it up. I'm going to turn it to the side middle position and down position so it looks definitely down now okay so we're going to go back to the up position that enables this RCO phono put them both down into the bottom position both down they default to the internal workings of the plasma ball as, as purchased from uh, in this case these were purchased at Walmart Okay, so these are six inch Walmart plasma balls and they go for 20 bucks. All right. So, how many minutes we have on this? Four minutes? I'll continue with this video. So, to connect, I have, um, get it in front of me, I have a standard audio cable that you can purchase down at the local drugstore or um, a lot of places. They're always just a few bucks. And they don't cost any more uh, much. It's better to get the better quality ones. Um, they typically somewhere around five dollars. Or you can buy the cheap ones at uh, the dollar store and they're anywhere from a uh, dollar to uh, two dollars typically. I have red and white on my connectors. I'm going to call red channel one because the output on the Spooky has a red and I'm going to put it in what I would call the main frequency control. You can see where it went. And I'm going to put channel 2. 
Now the spooky is turned off, but I'm going to turn it on. And let's see what uh, the frequency comes up as. I think I set all the defaults already. Very, very good. The spooky came up. It's hard to see, I know, so I'll tell you. The spooky came up at 30,000 uh, kilohertz. Actually, 30,001. Something I left over. It's running an amplitude of 6 volts into channel uh, 1. And um, it's doing a 50% duty cycle. So let's, let's turn this into spooky mode. I just turned the frequency uh, switch all the way up. And I'll start this um, by running a frequency. And there you go. Right now I have the frequency set, like I said, 30,000 kilohertz. So this is uh, now running at 30,000 kilohertz. I'm not doing any gating or anything else like that. Let's play with this at this, just a frequency for a few minutes and see all the variables that I have. Uh, I got six minutes. I think I'll run this minute of video to about 12 minutes. So I'll set frequency mode for channel one. And now I can dial in frequency. And right now I have 30 hertz, 30 kilohertz. I just went up to 40 kilohertz. I went up to 50 kilohertz. And 60, it went out. Let's go back down to 40, 30 kilohertz. I have a duty cycle of 50%. I'm going to go back up to 40. You notice how it gets a lot. 30, 40. Oh, I didn't go the other way. Let's go down. 30 hertz, 20 hertz. Oh, look at that. Much fuller body. More full than the two in the background. That's 20 hertz. 10 hertz, still pretty full. And let's go down to, um, well, let's see how far I can go down. 10, 9, eight, seven, six, five, four. Is it still, it's just glowing. It's hard to see it, but it is, it, there is a nice, um, there is a nice uh, plasma being generated. Um, a weaker at three kilohertz. Can you see those beams? Yeah, you can see them if you look real carefully. Maybe if I turn the other two off in the background, they're easier to see. Uh, if I turn the lights off, it might be easier to see. Yeah, I'm going to turn the lights off in the background. Just a second. Can you see it now? Oh, yeah. You definitely can see it uh, flashing. And that is at uh, 2 kilohertz. Go down to 1. And it's doing pretty much the same. It's pretty weak, but it's it's there. You got a nice flash. And I'm not going to go any slower than this because there's too much else I want to show you in this video. I'm going to go back up to um, 10 kilohertz and a nice looking plasma. And I'm going to play around with the duty cycle. So I'm going to step down to the duty cycle and I'm just going to try 40 can hardly tell a difference. 50, 40, can't tell the difference at all. 30% duty cycle, can't really tell the difference. 20% duty cycle, slight difference. Um, right now I'm at a 10% duty cycle. So if you can remember the three inch plaza ball, this six inch is far more dy dynamic, just way beyond my expectations. It runs off at of 12 volts rather than 5 volts, and that is a significant part of uh, why it works so beautifully. It's just unbelievable. Just unbelievable. So as you can see right off the bat, I have a lot of frequency control. Um, I didn't show you everything, but I, you can see that it has a wide range of frequency control. Now that I have it down to, um, back to, uh, let me, 10 kilohertz at 50, I'm going to go back up to 50 kilohertz. I'm at 10. I'm going to go back up to 50. 20, 30, 40, 50. 
And you notice you can still see the plasma in there. I'm going to play around with the duty cycle and see if I can improve that. Okay, I'm down to 20 kilohertz, I mean 20% uh, duty cycle, and you notice I get a lot more activity. So that old cliche, more is always better? Not in this case. A, a, a lower duty cycle actually makes the plasma ball work better. Isn't that amazing? Um, what else can I do to improve this? Not much. Not much. So I can modulate that um, by running a spooky protocol program that runs at um, whatever frequency I want, basically, very nicely from a range of one. Let's see if I can go higher than uh, 50 kilohertz. Step back to frequency. Wow, I'm up to 60 kilohertz, and you can see I still have plasma. I'm up to 70 kilohertz, and I still have plasma. Now, I know I've already tested this. This will fill. This will uh, fade out around 75 kilohertz way, way, twi over twice of what the 3-inch plasma ball did. And what I'm doing right now is I'm turning the frequency back down, 30, and now I'm back at 20 kilohertz. And I'm going to change this to 25. Wow, look at that. That is just so gorgeous. That's 25 kilohertz. Now, I'm going to bring in or introduce the gating frequency. Um, I really need to do a second video on this. We've got only a few seconds left. So I'm going to call this video one, and we'll pick it up on video number two. If I find the stop button. If I find the stop.